we're on the Living History Farm here at Roper Mountain Science Center, and we've set up an encampment, a little bit what it would look like if you were a militia member traveling with the 2nd South Carolina Regiment during the American Revolutionary War. Now, what we wanted to do today is speak to you a little bit about what it would be like to be a soldier in this war, not a member of the regular Continental Army, the professional soldiers, but one who is a militiaman, who walked away from their life sacrificed everything, put everything on the line for the cause of freedom. Since these men were not professional soldiers, they weren't outfitted with professional soldiering gear. They had to bring their own things from home that would help them survive. And so what would that be? Well, let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So first of all, what I'm wearing is what's called a hunting frock and this was very popular during the 18th century during the mid 1700s for um, people to wear who lived especially like on the frontier keep you very warm um, when you're out for instance hunting it could also get very warm though uh, in the summer when you are having to march now what i've got this first layer let me take my hat off oh is my blanket part of my bedroll is already down here and these would be rolled up together um, that I would carry. So I carried my bed with me wherever I went, which would be my, my blankets. Then I have, keep my hat off for a second, my canteen. Now, having water, of course, would be very important. And what do you notice about this canteen? Do you see what it's made of? You may have had a canteen at home that you drank from before. And it's probably metal, but you'll notice that this is all wood. And I would have made this at my house, um, on my homestead, and then carried this with me as I went off to fight. Water was very important to stay hydrated. Then, pan off again. This is what's called a haversack. And in this, I would carry a lot of different things. Some people would be fifers, and this is a fife. Um, I'm not going to play it because I'm not very good, but you would play it like, like this. And just like you like music, like you like to listen to you whenever you travel, um, we didn't have, of course, iPods, or we didn't have um, our cell phones with music. And so instead, people still like music, so they had to make it themselves. And these were very lightweight, they were handmade, and you could take them wherever you, wherever you went. And so you spent long hours on the march, or you spent long hours um, in camp, and you could get very bored. And so music always lifted people's spirits. So I would carry that with me if I knew how to play. It's a very important piece of uh, equipment in my haversack. My musket is right over there, but these muskets, my, my weapon that I used to fight uh, took black powder. Um, so to fire a, a musket ball, which I have in here as well, in my leather satchel here, to fire one of these musket balls out of the barrel of my musket, I have to have a charge, something to to fire it out of that that weapon. And so I would keep in this, can you tell what this is? What, an animal this may have come from? This is a cow's horn, okay? So this is called a powder horn. I would keep my black powder in this, in this horn to keep it dry because if powder got wet, it wouldn't spark. I couldn't fire my weapon. And so I would take my musket, I would put the powder down inside of the barrel of the musket with my musket ball. I'd also have something called like wadding. It was often like paper that would wrap around this musket ball. I'd ram it down in the musket of, or the barrel of my musket and then I would fire it. These were called flintlocks because how they fired where the spark came from was with a piece of flint. And on the hammer that I cocked back on my musket, there would be a piece of flint. And this flint, when it struck the metal, it would create a spark. 
that spark would go down in a little hole inside the barrel and ignite this gunpowder, which would then in turn fire this ball out. So all of these pieces were very important for me for my survival, also for hunting, because, you know, um, when I live on the frontier and I'm surviving for myself and my family, uh, I have to be able to provide my own food. And so these muskets, um, like the musket I would carry into, into battle, wasn't given to me by, uh, by the army, by the Continental Army. It was my own weapon that I, I'd used for hunting and defending my, uh, my homestead. And what was I hunting? Uh, well, deer was very plentiful here in this area in South Carolina. And, and then what I would do is, this is called venison and it's very dried. And so when I've, uh, I've hunted a deer uh, and then I, um, I skin that deer and process the meat, I then put this meat over a fire and smoke it for a very long time. And it creates this very um, tough meat called jerky. Some of you may have had it before. You can see just how tough it is. But the good thing about this is I would put a lot of salt on it. And salt is a preservative. Salt preserves the meat and makes it um, stay good, not rotting, for a long time. And why is this important? Because it may be a very long time before I get to have another source of, um, of meat. And so I want to make sure that this stays good for quite a while while I'm on the march. Okay, so that's venison jerky. This is a type of food called hardtack. Hardtack is, just as its name suggests, is very, very hard. This is flour and water uh, that in salt that has been baked and baked very hard. Matter of fact, sometimes they might bake this stuff four times. It looks like, kind of like a saltine cracker, doesn't it? Um, but the, um, it's not anywhere you'll see as easy to break as a saltine cracker. Matter of fact, this stuff is so hard, I can't even really bite into it. So what soldiers would do with a hard tack is they would often dip it, break it up into coffee. And I've had my coffee this morning that I was able to, to prepare over my fire. And when I put the hardtack into the coffee, what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen to that food, to this hardtack? That's right, it's going to get softer, okay? And so still though, <laughs> you'll notice it's still very hard to bite into. So I'd often break this into my, my coffee or I could put it into a soup or a stew. that I would prepare over my campfire in a bucket like this. So hardtack is essentially a bread, like a very hard biscuit, and it's very filling. It would help fill my stomach. Um, wash down my hardtack with my coffee. What else could I put in that stew? Well, here in my indigo blue bag, indigo process here in South Carolina, I have my rice, which in South Carolina, our uh, one of my primary cash crops was Carolina gold rice. And I could take my rice, keep my rice in a bag like this. It would also be in my haversack as I marched. And I put this rice into my pot. I could also add some beans. You'll see I have a variety of mixed beans in here. These are uh, these are actually beans and peas. And some black-eyed peas in here also. And so I could put this in here. I could uh, put the, the rice in here. If I wanted to, I could take my meat and throw some meat in there. Probably not my jerky though, but if I had some fresh meat uh, that would that I could add to this um, to my stew, it would be very filling and help keep me um, keep me ready for a march. That's all I have in my haversack I want to show you right now. But I want you to think about this. The men who joined the Continental Army 
and the militiamen who are volunteers that left their, uh, their homes, left their families behind to go fight this war, were doing so against the most powerful army in the entire world. The odds were really stacked against these American soldiers, but they firmly believed in freedom. And the sacrifices that they made are the reason we have a country today. The sacrifices that these men and women made allow us today to be free. Never take that freedom for granted. I hope you've enjoyed looking at some of the things that uh, a militiaman would have uh, with him as he, as he traveled, uh, as he camped. And um, next time you think about eating a good meal that's been prepared for you in a nice warm house, Think about the generations that went before you. They had to do all this for themselves, but they were doing it for future generations like you. Thanks for joining us.